Staplet.com has a great feature for normal distributions. With this applet, we can do two different operations. We can calculate the area under the curve. That would be defined a probability or percentage of the curve. Or we can use a probability, use an area, and find a value. I'll show you those two operations. We'll start with just calculating the area under the normal curve. That's the standard option. And in the beginning, we're only going to look at what's called the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is kind of like a basic unit distribution. We're going to just put zero in the middle and we're going to number our axis one at a time. The standard deviation is going to be that standard spacing that we're going to use. And one little tip about standard deviation is on this normal curve, we have these two spots on either side of the mean where it flattens out. So it's kind of curved up. We call that concave up um, to the left of that negative one, concave down in the middle between negative one and one, and concave up to the right of positive one. So this point, it's almost half the height or a little above half the height. Um, that is one standard deviation on either side. And then that sort of becomes like our yardstick. And so we just measure the rest of these that way. And that way, any normal curve we look at, we can use this standardized measuring system. And that's why it's called a standard normal distribution. So mean is zero, standard deviation of one. That just draws the curve. And then down at the bottom is where we have our operation to calculate the area. And we have several options there. The first problem we're going to look at is finding the area under the curve with z-scores less than negative 1.43, or probability that z is to the left or less than 1.43. That's to the left. Think of the less than sign is like an arrow pointing to the left. And we put in our negative 1.43. And we can see that area. We can um, see a z-score, so that it's telling me, just kind of confirming my z-score there. z is also going to be a relative measurement of how far over we are. This is negative 1.43, so it's saying we're going to go one and almost a half of a tick mark to the left, and that's where we're standardizing that. And that area is 0 0.00764. You can also label that. There's my Z, there's my area. Um, you may need to adjust your rounding preferences. Um, I tend to go for decimals with as much precision as possible, although this seems to cap us out at four decimal places. Now there is a way to use Google Sheets or Desmos to get more precise measurements. Please find those methods in the notes um, if you want to have a little more precision. So another example of this problem would be something where we're going in between two values. And there we're going to put the lower number left side first, higher number uh, or that right side second. And we'll see that shaded and labeled area. Now this time it must be 4920 because I do have, should have four digits of precision there. And then sometimes you're um, looking at something where it's shading to the right. And this one, it just happens to include an image as well. It's always nice to see the image because then we can sort of check our answer, see if it looks right. Here I'm shading more than half. In fact, I'm shading 